Welcome back to The Mining Show. I'm Peter Clausey with Investor Intel. Very happy today with our surprise guest, Russ Fryer from Critical Metals PLC. How you doing? Great, I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me, Peter. Great to see you again after eight months or so since I last saw you. Yeah, I guess it was November. Lots has gone on. Yeah. Well, we were lot. sitting at the National and we were talking about what you intended to do. Yes. And at the time you were looking at increasing your stake in a variety of things. Yes. So tell me about that. So we owned 57% uh, of a holding company on a see-through basis. It was 40% of a mine called Malulu in the DRC, Congo. And in the Congo. And we bought out the minority, so we went from 57% of this holding company to 100%, which allows us to have 70% of the mine. This mine is highly cash flow generative on the copper and cobalt basis. So, In theory or in practice? In practice, because we went into production the third week of January of this year, and we're probably the only small cap, micro cap uh, company listed in London that's been able to do a transaction and six months later put that transaction into cash flow production. Congratulations, man. Getting into production is such a great feeling. Oh, yeah. No, and particularly, you know, we're sitting in London, so it's almost the other side of the world. And to be able to have a, a strong team led by John Kreff and Lloyd Kirtley on the ground, just managing and captaining us through into production, it's, it's been phenomenal. I'm going to guess that the other 30% is owned locally or by the government. It's owned locally. We have a clause in there that we dilute down on a pro rata basis to give the government 10% once we go from a small-scale mining license to a, a PE or a big boy license right. where Glencore and Barracks and Ivanhoe's are. So uh, the 30% is held by four local partners. They're ex-co-ops, uh, heads of co-ops. So uh, they've got a free carry and uh, they're pretty happy uh, seeing cash flow and production uh, start. Yeah, well good for them and good for you. And I thought you traded on the AIM, but you're actually on the London Stock Exchange. Standard. So it's uh, it's the big person exchange where uh, the big mining houses like Glencore and Anglo and Rio and BHP are all located. And uh, the key about the London Stock Exchange is, is the North American investors, the Canadians and the U.S. investors can invest in that. It's much harder to invest as a Canadian or a U.S. investor into the AIM exchange. Yeah. And hence the reason why we picked uh, the big person exchange. And you have cash in the bank. Yes, we have 900,000 pounds of cash and about 24,000 pounds of debt, so basically debt-free. And some of that cash came from recent exercise of warrants. Yes. With shareholders showing additional faith in you and the management team. Yes, very much so. So what's next? So I've just completed, this is country number six on a, on a one-month tour around the world. And when I say around the world, I started in Zimbabwe, went to South Africa, went to Congo to look at the Democratic Republic of Congo to look at our mine, right. went to Rwanda, went to Tanzania, took a break uh, for about three days, changed uh, suits, and then came to Canada to uh, continue to uh, have talks about acquisitions in, in our further pipeline. So this year I see several transactions. M&A transactions, everything is... I'm going to guess that none of them are near Thunder Bay or... <laughs> exactly. It sounds like they're on another continent altogether. Yes, yes. They're, they're, they're close to uh, where we're operating, which is where I think our competitive advantage is, is, is that sub-Saharan African region. And that, we like it. High grades, uh, high skill sets. You know, this, the universities down there are churning out engineers and geologists. So there's plenty of skills really? down there. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize that University of Lumabashi puts out some phenomenal talent in terms of mining. And in Zimbabwe, you find phenomenal geologists and mine engineers that have been working for the likes of Anglo or Rio for, for decades. You seem comfortable with jurisdiction risk. Yes. Well, as I have said in the past, you know, I see a lot more jurisdictional risk in places like the U.S. where you can't get Pebble in Alaska funded. You can't get Twin Metals in Minnesota funded. You can't get Resolute in Arizona funded. You can't get Coles Hill in Virginia funded. Um, it's, it's, I, I'm much more comfortable in Africa where the grades are higher and the governments are really keen on seeing Western capital come in to create jobs than I am in places where a billionaire can write a check to a law firm in Colorado, let's say, and keep us from going into production. So, yeah, I, right now I, I prefer Africa and sub-Saharan Africa over, let's say, the U.S. Good story. Thank you very much, Peter. Thanks for dropping by. It's always nice to see you. Pleasure to see you too, my friend. Russ Fryer from Critical Metals PLC. Roughly 60 million shares issued note. I'm Peter Clausey from Investor Intel. Have a great day.